بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومواله رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا رب العالمين I start by greeting you all with the greeting of Islam the greeting of the people of Jannah السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته It's my pleasure and my honor to be back in this masjid with you guys. Today, as our second part as promised, we are going to speak about servitude to Allah Azza wa Jal, ibadah, worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal. And linking it to last week, we mentioned that one of the main purposes of knowledge is an ta'bud Allah ala basira, that you worship Allah Azza wa Jal upon knowledge. You worship Allah Azza wa Jalla by knowing what you are worshiping Allah Azza wa Jalla, what you are saying, why you are worshiping Allah Azza wa Jalla. As a matter of fact, in today's salah, every single one of us declared a statement. Every single one of us in salah today declared a statement where we said in Surah Al-Fatiha, Iyaka na'bud. You alone we worship, O oh Allah. Everyone here, when they pray today, this would be Salat al Isha, as a minimum of 17 times a day. If you've prayed all of your salahs, you would have said, Iyaka na'bud. You alone we worship, O Allah. What does that servitude to Allah Azawajal mean? What does worship for Allah Azawajal mean? You worship Allah Azawajal. How is your worship for Allah Azawajal? What are the means of worship? What's your methodology of worship? You worship Allah Azza wa Jal, how do you know if this worship is accepted or rejected? You worship Allah Azza wa Jal, how do you know and understand what Allah wants you to worship Him with? Because if you look at the Jews and the Christians and the nations that came before, they also claim to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. There are people that gather in churches, sing hymns, they nod, they dance, they chant, and they claim that they worship Allah Azza wa Jal. And some of them may even come from a place of sincerity. They believe in the existence of a supreme being and their heart inclines towards it, but their understanding of worship has been misconstrued. To understand that worship is singing and chanting. <coughs> there are Muslims in today's day and age, they understand worship as I am going to go visit the grave of a certain individual. There are people all around the world that still visit temples, they go to statues, Buddha and the rest of it to worship because that's their understanding of worship. As a matter of fact, the Kuffar of Quraysh, when they were worshipping their statues, and Allah Azza wa Jal told them in the Quran that these are deaf, they are dumb, they cannot cure you, they cannot feed you. They said, مَا نَعْبُدُهُمْ إِلَّا لِيُقَرِّبُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ زلفة. What we worship here is only to bring us closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. But they missed the first principle of worship. It's understanding what worship is. Worship which is the sole purpose of the creation. The sole message that Allah sent the messengers with. He said, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاشْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ That we've sent in every single nation a messenger. Worship Allah and avoid the ways of Taghut, the devil. And Allah tells us in the Quran, a very famous ayah about worship, that we all hear. That the purpose of creation for men and jinn is what's the ayah? وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have only created jinn and men to worship Allah Azza wa Jal alone. Worship. What does that term mean? Worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal means that everything at worship, at anything that counts as worship, are things that Allah Azza wa Jal loves and accepts, whether they are a statement 
or actions that are hidden or public. That's the definition that Shaykh al-Islam gave worship. Anything that Allah loves and accepts and it's something that can be hidden or private, private or public, whether it's things that you say with your tongue or actions that you act upon. Worship isn't limited to actions that you can only think about in the context of worshiping Allah Azawajal. Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu an, he said in, the, in his statement, he said, إِنِّي أَحْتَسِبُ نَوْمَتِي كَمَا أَحْتَسِبُ قَوْمَتِي That I count my sleep as an act of worship just like I count me standing in the night prayer. Why? Because him staying and going to sleep is to energize him and sustain him and have him ready to pray in his night prayer. So he said, I count that sleep as I count the prayer. The Prophet وسلم, when he told the companions that he said when the man comes to his wife, he will have he will be rewarded for that. The companions will say a man fulfills his pleasure or messenger of Allah and is rewarded. He said, Did you see if this man went about it in a haram way? Will he be sinful? They said, yes. He said, then if he does it in halal, then he's rewarded. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, he said, هَلْ تَدْرِي مَا حَقُّ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْعِبَادِ Do you know what the right of Allah Azza wa Jal? Do you know what the right that Allah has upon us? That we must fulfill for Allah Azza wa Jal. He said, no messenger of Allah. He said, the right that Allah has upon his servants is that they worship him associating no partners with him and then he said and the right that the servants have upon Allah is that if they serve if they worship him associating no partners with him Allah will allow them to enter into Jannah that's a right that we have that if we manage and we fulfill this obligation that Allah has asked from us we will be rewarded by Allah Azza wa Jal with Jannah. Actions and ibadah and servitude to Allah Azza wa Jal can be broken into many different types as we said. From the first of them is actions that are statements of public. Things that you say publicly. For example, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah me saying that statement of belief is worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal. Me saying Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, Wala ilaha illallah, Wallahu akbar, Wala hawla wala quwwata illa billah. All of these are statements of worship that are done by the tongue. Something that you say, enjoining good, forbidding evil. That's something that you do with your tongue. You command people to do that which is good. You command people to refrain from that which is evil. And then there are statements that are hidden, concealed within you. For example, affirming faith. Your heart must establish that this statement is true. You can say La ilaha illallah all you want. If it's not in your heart, you're in a state of hypocrisy. The kuffar of Quraysh, or the, kuffar, the hypocrites of Medina, they used to attend the salah in the masjid with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But in the Quran, Allah says, Inna al-munafiqeena fi al-daraki al-asfali min al-nar. That these people, even though they prayed with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were there in his armies for some of the battles. They are in the lowest ranks of the hellfire. And you will not find for them anyone that can help or prevail for them. <coughs> the heart affirming these statements of the tongue. The second type of actions or the second type of worship is actions and some of these actions are actions of the limbs 
Salah is ibadah. Fasting is ibadah. Zakah is ibadah. Tawaf is ibadah. You visit someone that is sick, it's ibadah. And then there are actions that are almost a state that you are in. You cannot, whatever words you have, you cannot articulate this servitude to Allah Azza wa Jal. Such as fear of Allah. That is ibadah. Such as loving Allah Azza wa Jal. Such as having tawakkul upon Allah Azza wa Jal. This is ibadah of Allah as well. But whatever you have, whatever you can do, you cannot articulate it. As a matter of fact, some of this ibadah is far better than the ibadah of actions. And I don't mean it by the ibadah of actions, meaning your salah, your compulsory. These are things that if you do not do, you are sinful and you will be held accountable by Allah. But what sets some of the greatest men in this history of Islam apart from others is that state of the heart, the, inter the internal ibadah. That servitude to Allah Azza wa Jal that puts them in a state of almost discomfort at the thought that they are disobeying Allah Azza wa Jal or not utilizing their time to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. For example, one of the greatest men after the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a man by the name of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. Anyone know who this man is? <coughs> the fifth of the Caliph al Rashidun. He's regarded as the fifth of the Khulafa al Rashidi. The fifth of the rightly guided Khulafa. Anyone can tell us anything more about him? He tried to bring things back in the right direction. Okay, he bought things. He yeah. bought things back in the right direction. Yeah. This man was one of the Khulafa of Bani Umayyah. He was so fearful of Allah Azza wa Jal that often it would be reported that he would collapse out of fear. He was the Khalifa of the Muslims for two years. During his time he changed the affair of the whole Ummah. So much so that people would walk around with the money of Zakah to try to find someone to give it to and there was no one to receive Zakah. Justice established a community and a society. His wife, Fatima, she mentions, she said that Umar ibn Abdul Aziz was not better than any of us by his salah or his fasting or his qiyam or his recitation of the Quran. It was normal by comparison. And by the way, when we say normal, we don't say normal by our standard. We read the Quran once every Friday. No, normal by their standard. That people used to, used to stay up half the night in prayer and say, you know what, this is normal. People used to read the Qur'an every three days, every seven days, every five days, normal. People used to give their wealth and used to give large portions of their wealth, normal. People used to go out to jihad, sacrificing their life and that being regarded normal. That level of ibadah, we don't speak about our level of ibadah, that we regard the person that's praying their five daily prayers to be a, a religious person, no. This man, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz's wife said that he did not beat anyone by virtue of his worship, his actions, but he said, Kana akhwathakum lillah. He was so afraid of Allah Azza wa Jal. His heart would tremble of fear that he's unjust to an individual. That state is ibadah, that's worship of Allah Azza wa Jal. And when this man died, he's widely regarded as the first mujaddid of this Ummah. Ibadat, actions of Ibadah vary. That's why the companions of the Prophet ﷺ used to come and ask him, what's the best action? What is the best Ibadah? What can I do? Tell me something that brings me closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. And often the Prophet ﷺ would command with similar things. Being good to parents would come up. Jihad fi sabilillah would come up. No days are better than action, and it would be actions that are better than the rest of the actions. 
and then actions that are better because of the time that these actions are done at. So for example, when the Prophet ﷺ was asked about the best of actions, he said, As-salatu ala waqtiha. Praying at its due time. <coughs> and often the Prophet ﷺ is asked, or the Prophet ﷺ tells the companions that there are no days that the actions are more beloved to Allah Azza wa Jal than the 10 days of the Hijjah. And the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam know about the level of jihad and how high of an action. They said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, Hatta al jihadu fi sabillah, even jihad for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. He said, even jihad, except a man that leaves with his wealth and himself and returns with nothing. Ultimate sacrifice. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the actions of the, day, the days of the Hijjah are better than any others. No doubt, fasting Monday and Thursday is better than fasting Wednesday. No doubt, praying the 12 Sunan Rawatib is better than you staying after Salat al Isha and praying 12 Rakahs as Nafila. There is no doubt that giving your zakah and your sadaqah to those who are closest is better than you giving sadaqah to a random project. And there is no doubt that actions weigh differently and various. However, the servitude to Allah Azza wa Jal, and there are so many examples that we can give. And just to kind of tie you to last week when he said about people seeking knowledge. Al-Imam Al-Nawi rahmatullahi alayhi it's reported that for two years he did not sleep laying down. For two years he would be writing and writing and he would fall on his table and he would wake up and he would continue writing. Al-Imam Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi Al-Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim they find themselves in prison. Al-Imam Al-Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi expelled from his city dying alone and others Baqi ibn Makhlad and so on and so forth traveling all corners of the globe walking sometimes not eating for days for what? for the worship of Allah Azza wa through various means whether it's knowledge when we speak about Khalid ibn Walid rahmatullahi alayhi or radiallahu an and his level of commitment that's so much so that he said that I am going to die on my bed after 100 battles and there isn't an inch in my body that doesn't have a wound of a sword or has been thrown out by an arrow or has been hit by a spade every single inch of his body. Or Al-Imam Shafi'i rahmatullahi alayhi when the month of Ramadan would come and he would read the Qur'an 60 times in the month of Ramadan. Meaning that all of his month is dedicated for the recitation of the Qur'an. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an, giving all of his wealth. Not once, multiple times. Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu an, giving all of his wealth. Over various occasions, Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu an, given majority of his wealth, and so on and so forth. All of these different types of ibadah. Why? Why? When the companions of the Prophet sallallahu and the tabi'een after them report and they say that sometimes they would stand up in the night prayer for a third of the night. Half the night, Uthman and Affan starting Surah Baqarah and not finishing, not going to Ruku until he reads Baqarah, Ali Imran, Nisa, and Maida, and so on and so forth. The Prophet, وسلم, the greatest of examples, that he used to stand up in the night prayer, that until his feet will start to, to almost fall apart. Why? Why so much servitude? Reading the Quran, for some of us, we think, why read it 60 times, O oh, Imam Shafi? If in Ramadan I manage to read the Quran once, wow, I'm from amongst the pious. 
If I have 10,000 pounds and I am able to give half of it, I best have the door of Jannah of Sadaqah open for me. That's the expectation that some of us have. Why did these people continue to put themselves through? Al-Imam Al-Qayyim Rahmatullah and Imam Taymiyyah I use them as example. Do you think they went to prison once? They went to prison repeated occasions. And there were so many opportunities for them, Imam Ahmed and the rest of them, that if they change their opinion about one mas'ala, one question, if they take a different opinion, no problem. And Imam Ahmed was in prison about, and his son reports this, and he said, my father years after, he would make dua for a certain man. And he would keep making dua for him. And they asked him, they said, Oh, Imam Ahmed. He asked him, he said, Oh, my father, why do you make dua for this man? He said, While I was in prison, this man was brought in because he was drinking. And he was being lashed and whipped. And he asked Imam Ahmed, who are you? And he tells him that uh, this is Ahmed ibn Hanbal. He said to him, you are the man that's been imprisoned about the fitna of the creation of the Qur'an. He said, yes I am. He said, you see me? I am imprisoned for drinking and I keep getting arrested and I keep coming back for drinking and I do not leave it. He said, if I can do this for falsehood, then you can remain for, firm for truth. And that was one of the reasons he remained firm. Why? Because there's a leather of ibadah. There's a beauty to ibadah. There's a true taste of ibadah that sometimes people reach and many of us struggle to obtain. That's why some of the scholars of the past would say that we are in a leather. We are in a state of beauty that when it comes to ibadah. There's a beauty, a beautiful feeling to ibadah. They said if the kings were to know about this, they would bring out their swords and they would fight us for it. When the Prophet وسلم, would say to Bilal, Radiallahu an, Arihna biha ya Bilal, let us find our peace in this prayer, O Bilal. When Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu an said, Law tahurat kulubuna, lama shabi'at min kalam illah, that if our hearts were to be pure, it would never be sufficient for us how much we read from the Qur'an because you would always want to read more. And Imam Ibn Rajab rahmatullahi alayhi, he says about this, he said there is nothing more beloved to a person that loves Allah than hearing the words of Allah Azza wa Jal, recited and reading the words of Allah Azza wa Jal. An example is Abu Dahtah radiallahu an. The man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he was building a wall around his garden. And he and his neighbor disagreed over one palm tree. One palm tree. It happened to fall within this side of the wall or it happened to fall in the middle of the wall. So he said to him, let me include it in my garden and build my wall around it. He said, no, you're not allowed to include it. They came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said to him, O Messenger of Allah, he wants to take my tree from me. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, give him that palm tree and you have a palm tree in Jannah. One palm tree and you have a palm tree in Jannah. The man said, no. Abu Dahdah is listening. He said, Oh Messenger of Allah, I have my gardens, not one palm tree, gardens. He asked the man, he said, Can you sell me that one tree for my gardens so that I can give this tree to the Prophet ﷺ and I can take that tree in Jannah? He went back to his wife and she said, Rabbi Halbayah, that oh, how successful of a purchase. If one of us was to be told by an example, give your modern semi-detached house and you take with you one door handle. 
Nothing else. The door handle. How many of us would believe in that? And how many of us would be willing to do that? When it comes to the salah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would ask Bilal to let us find, let him find peace in salah. Call for the prayer so we find peace. A man by then, one of the, one of the children of the companions, Urwa ibn Zubayr ibn Awam, rahmatullahi alayhi, he had a tumor on his leg and his leg was to be amputated. And he said to, he said to the man, let me start my prayer. And once I fall into the position of khushu' concentration, then you can cut my leg off. They cut his leg. And as they amputated his leg, he collapsed. He lost consciousness before his khushu' wore off. This level of ibadah comes with perseverance. Comes with someone that understands that Allah Azza wa Jal, I am in need to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. That my sole goal and purpose is to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. Is wama umiru illa liyabudu Allah mukhlisina lahuddin. That you were only commanded to worship Allah Azza wa Jal sincere for him to him when it comes to religion. And once you are sincere to him and you give and you see Allah Azza wa replenishes your wealth, you pray and you find peace and tranquility in your salah, you fast and you do not starve because you've detached yourself from the dunya, you read the Quran and every time you read it you understand that these are the words of Allah Azza wa that he, I am communicating to myself by reading them. Then and only then you start to feel the sense of love for ibadah. Ask from the pious and read about the pious. You will see that some of them wouldn't miss a salah. Not because getting to the front row is easy. Not because waking up for fajr is easy, it's not. But because they understand the reward of waking up to fajr. They understand that while everyone's asleep at 7 or 6 in the morning, while the night falls and people rest their bed, there is a select group of people that prostrate to Allah Azza wa Jal. They are the closest people to Allah Azza wa Jal on this earth and they want to be from amongst them. There are means of looking at and obtaining the beauty of servitude to Allah Azza wa Jal of ibadah. From the first of them is Mujahadatu nafs ala al-ibadati wa ta'weedihah That Abu Yazid rahmatullahi alayhi he said I suqtu nafsi ila Allahi wa hiya tabki fama ziltu asuquha hatta nsaqat ilayya wa hiya tadhak They said I had to guide my soul to Allah azza wa jal while it's weeping meaning that I had to put pressure on myself until eventually I reach the state where my soul brings me to Allah Azza wa Jal and it's joyful, happy. Being guided to the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal requires forcing these actions upon yourself. One of the questions that perhaps maybe even the Imam will attest to this that I used to get and I get it quite a lot I struggle to wake up for Fajr. It's difficult to wake up for Fajr. And I often counter ask, my brother, you struggle to wake up for Fajr, what time do you sleep? 2 a.m. in the morning, 3 a.m. in the morning. What's the last time you use your phone in the night? I'm on my phone until I go to sleep. What's your first alarm for Fajr? 15 minutes before sunrise, if they have an alarm. And then the question becomes, do you sleep on a state of wudu? No. Do you read your adhkar before you sleep? No. Then let me ask you, if you are not willing to sacrifice the late nights and head to bed early for Salat al-Fajr, 
are you really prioritizing the prayer? But in truth, if you manage to do this, if you pray, if you pray your Aisha and your extra nawafil and your witr, and then you pray, you sleep in a state of wudu, reading all of your athkar, and you set your alarm early, and you sleep early, and you seek Allah's help to wake up for Fajr, 99 times out of 100, you will end up waking up. And that's just a fact. But are you willing to make that sacrifice? Are you willing to commit? Are you willing to try hard? That's a decision between everyone and themselves. One of the scholars of the past, he said, كَبَتُّ الصَّلَاةَ عَشْرِينَ سَنَةً وَتَنَعَمْتُ بِهَا عَشْرِينَ سَنَةً That I struggled with prayer for 20 years. And then I enjoyed my prayer for 20 years. For 20 years, khushu' difficult. Salah on time, hard. Concentration, it's not easy. It's easy to pray in autopilot. Two, three rak'ahs quickly and then moving on to four rak'ahs, Maghrib, Isha, whatever it is, quickly. It's hard to recite it different surah at every single salah but once you persevere that becomes a place of joy and happiness for you a second thing and that helps with ibadah is al-ikthar min al-nawafil doing the additional prayers the additional obligation the additional worship more often if you are someone that prays qiyamul layl and you have one night off. You will wake up for Fajr, but you will miss Qiyam al Layl. If you are someone that prays all of your 12 Sunan, you may miss some of the Sunnah, but you will always pray the Fara'il. If you are someone that prays pure minimum, you will find yourself missing the Salah times now, and then missing the Salah then, and then delaying the Salah, and rushing that Salah. So building up the habit of doing additional and extra nawafil. The third thing is reading the Qur'an and pondering over the Qur'an. Be someone that reflects upon the Qur'an. Reads, ponders. And once you read and ponder, you see the state of the nations that came before. That the messengers came to them and they called them to Allah Azza wa Jal and they turned their back upon the message. And where did that lead them? What did, that, what did that result? You see the commandments that Allah Azza wa gave the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Know and understand for you to worship Allah Azza wa the aim should always be the highest level of servitude. What's the highest level of servitude? Al-Ihsan. أن تعبد الله كأنك تراه فإن لم تكن تراه فإنه يراك. The highest level of worship to Allah Azza wa Jalla is You worship Allah Azza wa Jalla as if He sees you. And if He do not, if He doesn't see you, if you don't see Him, you worship Allah Azza wa Jalla as if you see Him, knowing that you do not see Him but He sees you. Ihsan, the highest level of servitude. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us or the last thing I will tell you is that about this is that also do not think obtaining worship and being from the ibad, the ibad of Allah Azza wa Jal, the worshippers of Allah Azza wa Jal is something that is given. It's something that you ask Allah Azza wa Jal. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Mu'ad ibn Jabal, he said, Oh Mu'ad, verily I love you, so do not leave this Call to Allah Azza wa Jal, Allahumma inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadati. Oh my Lord, guide me, help me, assist me upon your remembrance, upon gratitude to you, and upon being a good worshipper. There are various people in their salah that they, they worship Allah Azza wa Jal and their reward is not given in full because of their own actions. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us about people that pray that مَا كُتِبَ لَهُ مِنْ صَلَاتِهِ That only what's written for him from his salah is one-tenth, one-ninth of the reward, one-eighth of the reward, one-seventh of the reward, one-sixth of the reward, a fifth, a quarter, a third, 
half the reward. Meaning there are people that are praying that 90% of their reward they've just given away because of the way they pray. So when it comes to ihsan in worship, it comes on certain things. One is having knowledge of your worship and having knowledge of Allah Azza wa Jal. Two is purifying your soul, having a clean soul. And that's why Ibrahim alayhi salam said, the day of judgment, wealth, children will not benefit you except if you come to Allah Azza wa Jal with a pure heart. Remembering Allah Azza wa Jal often. If you are someone that all times of the day, Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, Wala ilaha illallah, Wallahu akbar, Wala hawla la quwwata illa billah. That's going to be your state at anything. You're afraid, you remember Allah. You're happy, you remember Allah. You find a moment of difficulty, you remember Allah. By contrast, there are people that their tongue is very soft when it comes to swearing. They're upset, F this and F that. They're angry, they're happy, yeah, F word. Every single expression is based on filth. But if your tongue is always remembering Allah Azza wa Jal, that's how you build up your tongue. And the last thing is asking Allah Azza wa Jal for help. Now when it comes to why ibadah or why your ibadah may not be accepted. And I'm going to give three reasons. The first of them is that some people call upon other than Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah says in the Quran, وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا That these mosques are the houses of Allah Azza wa Jal do not call upon other than Allah Azza wa Jal. Someone will say, I'm Muslim. My name is Abdullah Muhammad. I do not call upon other than Allah Azza wa Jal. Some people wake up, call, and all they do is worship money. Money. Worship wealth. Some people, they will worship Allah Azza wa Jal as long as it does not upset them or upset their neighbors, upset their family members, as long as it doesn't upset co-workers. That's why sometimes when people will say, I worship Allah Azza wa Jal, but I can't pray at work. It gets awkward, people look at me. So your worship to Allah Azza wa Jal is below your fear of people. Another thing is Allah Azza wa Jalla said, "Ana aghna al-shuraka yani shirk." I am Allah said in the Hadith al-Qudsi, "I am the the richest of partners, and I am free from needing any partnership. Anyone that does an action for my pleasure and the pleasure of someone else, taraktuhu wa shirka. I leave him and his actions." You associate partners with Allah Azza wa Jalla in your action. You want Allah to be pleased, but equally, you want someone else to be pleased? I have news for you. Allah is not pleased with you, and neither is that person going to be pleased. You do something purely for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jalla, to please Allah Azza wa Jalla, He will be pleased with you, He will ask the angels to be pleased with you, and that pleasure will descend into this dunya. Thirdly, reasons why our actions and our ibadah is not accepted is because we build upon our ibadah reasons for our good deeds to be given away. The Prophet asked his companions, Atadruna man al muflis, do you know who the bankrupt individual is? I said, Al muflis ufina man la dirhama lahu wa la dina. The muflis, the bankrupt amongst us, is a man that doesn't have any money, any wealth, any dinar, any dirham, any pounds, any dollars, no wealth. The Prophet said, but the bankrupt individual is the man that comes on the Day of Judgment with mountains of good deeds. Mountains of good deeds. However, he insulted this person, backbiting this person. He physically assaulted this person. He lied about this person. In business dealings, he cheated from this person. And then he said he will be bought. And these people will be brought forth. And his good deeds will be taken and given to this person, to that person, to 
that person, to that person, to recompensate them until he said all of his good deeds finish. So their bad deeds will be taken and it will be piled on top of him and it will overburden him and it will be thrown into the hellfire. That's the bankrupt individual. Death can only be the thing that stops you from worshipping Allah Azza wa The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because the, the wish of the dead is to go back and worship Allah Azza wa Isn't it true that one of their statements Allah tells us He said that I wish I go back فأصدق. I give, I donate Oh how I wish I can go back so I donate The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam walked past the graveyard and he said this man here Raka'atan, two rak'ahs from what you belittle is more beloved to this man than the world and everything that's on it so worshiping Allah Azza wa is something that you do at any given opportunity until Allah tells us in the Quran, وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Then the certainty, the certain inevitable death will come to you. And that's why when it comes to worshiping Allah Azza wa it's without a doubt one of the essentials of our faith. And there is no way anyone is going to obtain the Jannah of Allah Azza wa without worshiping Him. I ask Allah Azza wa to make us from His from his worshippers, from those who hear the best of speech and benefit from it. Allah Ala wa Alam Munisbatul Almi Lay Aslam, Jitakum Lakhir for listening. Anything good I've said is from Allah Azul, anything bad I've said is from the evils of myself and the Shaytan. Subhanakallah Muhammadik Ashadullah ilahilla and Tasakhruka wa tubalaik, Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen.